Hi, I'm going to tell you today why I think a small lathe like this one is a really good acquisition if you're making automata or any sort of model making really. I'm not making a particular case for this one, just this sort of size really, there's quite a lot of choice. I like this particular one though, because uh, it's quite light. It's just about light enough to move around, there's never enough room in the workspace, is there? The other thing I like about it is that it's got a, a reversing switch, it goes backwards and forwards, and the electronic speed control, so you're not messing around changing the, uh, the gears all the time. The one addition I made to it is I bought, I bought a uh, quick change tool post, you just tighten them up. This is a really almost a, well, it is a necessity, otherwise you're spending a lot of time tooling up. Basically it's a nice quiet little lathe. I made an, an alteration I did make though, it's got uh, automatic um, feed and also screw driving and I actually took all those gears out course to make it just uh, a straight run so it, it makes it a bit quieter and also of course there's a bit less wear if all those gears aren't spinning round. Also a really nice thing about it is that the motor actually has a wooden pulley I don't know why that is uh, it seems to work I've had it uh, a couple of years or so now this and it's still going strong so yeah this is a Proxon, Proxon 250E and uh, yeah I really like it. Anyway I'll show you the 10 different things that I um, use this for, different things I make uh, for automata which I probably couldn't make without this. Okay 10 things that I use a lathe for. Number one we've got wooden crank handles. Spinning there we are cut out of uh, I've actually made these on a CNC lathe to be honest because you get the same shape each time but you could do them just straight with a hand scraper on the lathe but I use the lathe for uh, sanding them down, finishing them, varnishing them and it's real, actually I wax them and it's really useful because you can run it backwards and so that takes the burr off the wood and you can get a nice finish big ones and small ones uh, I think it makes a nice job when you've got a handle which turns up nicely. So number two, washers. I use a lot of washers, usually PTFE washers. Got them on the neck there, you've got them on the arms, just make sure the wood isn't rubbing against the wood so it lasts a lot longer. Uh, here's the washers. These are the simplest thing to make and you're never really short of a washer when you've got a lathe. So number three, screw threads. I use these mainly just on the uh, crank handles so you can take them off for shipping basically. Otherwise there's just a danger that uh, something moves when you're shipping. You've got the leverage of the crank handle which can break and I did once have one break and since then I've always made the screw on ones. That's good. I don't use the uh, lathe screw cutting. I actually use a die to do them. It makes it much quicker. Um, it's important to buy good dies though. Good cutters, taps. Because I, I once bought a set of cheap ones and they got a lot of burrs on them and they just did not work at all, particularly on the smaller sizes. So pick which size you want to use. I use an M5 5mm one on these and buy good quality ones and then they'll last you a long time and give you a really nice job. So number four, pins. I use pins a lot for putting the arms on for instance. Uh, putting the crank knobs on, uh, putting gears on some of my other ones. Uh, in the past I uh, in the past I would use wire for some things like these and just bend it at the end but you can't use wire for those, you need something. I did try cutting them out of solid uh, brass rod but that seemed rather wasteful so now I drill a hole in a, a thicker piece and then put the smaller piece inside, glue it on and then finish it off. One of the slight problems with the lathe I've got is that the uh, the two mil doesn't is a bit loose in the lathe so I made a little adaption which works with a little mini um, 
hand vise which goes into the uh, into the chuck and then uh, we'll turn it number five is axle ends brass axle ends which made a big difference compared to having wood running in wood And I, and I also use the lathe for cutting the wood back, the dowel, so that when you put the axle end on it's flush. So there we have one, the crank handle end, I've already put the crank handle at that end, you see we have a nice, uh, nice axle. These, this puts me under number So this brings me up to number six, which is bushings. So instead of putting that brass into the wood, I put this, I make these uh, Delrin bushings, put those into the wood and then the brass fits onto there and that gives a really smooth uh, joint there. And that'll run forever, whereas wood on wood is likely to wear. Number seven, drilling uh, the necks. I need to get controls through the neck to the head and so I uh, drill the whole drill dowels all the way through and then I make uh, delrin bushings to put on the ends and then you can run the brass through the bushings sometimes I just have a simple rod like this which will run the eyes sometimes if the mouth as well I put a four millimeter uh, brass tube and then the rod so you've got a double action going through and again nice and smooth of course you've then got to come to number nine which is you need to do something with the end of the rod there so what I can do is make little uh, rod ends there various shapes and sizes which I just glue on and then that will sit on the cam follower it's not glued yet obviously Oh. Goes up and down with the cam follower. Then we've got number nine counterweights, different shapes and sizes. These are actually steel ones, it's just heavier than the brass. Sometimes I make them out of brass. So I cut them out of the steel and then I use gun blue to make them black and then finish them with a bit of wax just to keep them nice and shiny and then number 10 when you've got a lathe really you can make all sorts of things and a couple of years ago I actually made this little steam engine with mine which I'm quite pleased with took a little while to do but it's a different uh, a different skill rather than working in wood to be much more precise in some ways um, but on the other side there's no um, no allowing for humidity etc once you've made it when it fits it fits and uh, yeah runs quite nice though on compressed air I've never actually tried it with steam I don't have a boiler but yeah not something I would do that much but I thought I'd try one uh, just for a change so they're the 10 things that I use a lathe for. I can really recommend one. They're not that expensive for what they are and they can really open yourself up to uh, being able to make new things and better quality things. Uh, I use mine all the time. It's probably my most used tool. So yeah, thank you for watching. See you next time.